The Cube presents UiPath Forward 5. Brought to you by UiPath. Welcome back to The Cube's coverage of UiPath Forward 5 2022. This is The Cube's fourth UiPath Forward. They're mining automation gold here at the conference and in the customer base, and we're creating Cube Gold. Dave Vellante and Dave Nicholson. Sherlyn Chin is here. She's the Vice President of Global Alliances at UiPath. And Samir Bohra, who's the Director of Information Technology at Deloitte. Good to see you guys. Great, thank you. Now normally we would be talking about you know, how Deloitte's out, you know, doing its thing with its customers, but this is actually a, a case study on Deloitte's use mm -hmm. of automation and UiPath. So that's cool. Yeah. So you yeah. not only partner with the GSIs, you actually sell to them as well. Right. Okay, what's, what's that all about? What's your relationship like? Why don't you start there? Absolutely, so um, we're thrilled to be here. Thanks for having us. Sure. And really appreciate uh, Samir being here with us. You know, you, Deloitte was an early adopter of UiPath, not just as a partner um, driving innovations and investing in um, getting skilled and building the capability. They were the first to become the USN certified uh, partner network. Um, investing in thousands and thousands of skilling up their consultants and um, resources to, to help us uh, address our customer needs together. But it's not just about being a great partner, it's about being a customer. With what they've done and built their own business around UiPath and the automations, we've got an amazing story to tell you about today that we'd love to share. All right, Samir, let's hear it. What's the story? What was the catalyst to bring in automation, UiPath? Where are you applying it? Where'd you start? Fantastic, well, first of all, thanks for having me here. You're welcome. Um, I'll start this journey with the predictions that we were making at some point. So Deloitte, as a company, we are, we are in the business of predicting the technology trends. We've been tracking automation as a trend for quite some time, and we have been following how this industry is going to come along. Um, and we then started placing our bets not just on the technology, but on the vendor as well in this case. Uh, right around 2017, 18 is when we started uh, kind of implementing automation with UiPath uh, for our internal purposes. And as it happens, uh, different constituents in our member firm started doing it at the same time without kind of you know, consulting with each other. But the surprising thing is that we all ended up with the same result. We all ended up with UiPath, we all ended up using the same, uh, same technology uh, uh, set. Uh, and it was good that we all made the same choice because we could then all get along with it together. Um, so we started our journey kind of disintegrated in a way and then we came along quickly uh, all together. Uh, we then have COEs in each of our member firms, or at least the big member firms. Um, and around January last year is when we signed an enterprise license agreement with UiPath that really brought some of our mature COEs together. Um, and now we are kind of utilizing the product quite well. We are exploring the, the benefits of, that ELA brings to us. So that has been our journey so far. Uh, just in terms of some numbers, we are more than 400 million hours saved for, uh, for, our, for our member firm. Um, we have hundreds of processes that we have automated. I'm kind of losing uh, you know, uh, count of that already. Uh, and we have a good uh, 70, 80 member uh, team members across our three mature COEs that are constantly automating day in and day out. So there's a lot in terms of the history and there's a lot that we are looking in forward to. Can you paint a picture of sort of where you're applying these automations in your business and maybe we double click on that a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, so when we started our journey, there were some, uh, some candidates right off the bat. You know, there were some of our enabling areas where we were looking at, for instance, finance, uh, our talent, which we also call as HR. Uh, those were some of our preliminary areas that we, that we uh, started doing automations for. But another surprising thing is that um, our, uh, our first automation use cases were actually contingent solutions that we built to help some of the other big deployments that were happening in, in the firm. And in absence of any good solution, we said, let's bring in RPA, let's bridge the gap. And that basically opened the door for us to, uh, to use automation uh, at, a, at a bigger scale. So it's enabling areas, talent, finance, business operations, those are the, the, the prominent areas, marketing, um, chief, chief culture, those are the areas that we are applying it. And then our services on the other hand are using automation as well. Because 
we need our services people to be armed with the valuable time uh, to be able to invest in, on our clients rather than you know being stuck in repetitive mundane tasks. So we are pretty much applying it all over the board now. So as, a, as director of IT at Deloitte, I'm curious about how this process works for you. You've heard the, you've heard the, the term uh, drinking one's own, own champagne. Yeah. When you are looking- Or dog fooding, but okay. Or, or dog fooding. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to be polite, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. One throat to choke, one bat to pat. Bat yeah. to pat. <laughs> right. Are you immediately and at all times under a microscope when you're deploying something internally because someone else in Deloitte is thinking, okay, let's see how this works for us. Because if it works well, if we gain expertise, we can turn this into a line of business to help our clients. Is that something that starts day one? Or do people come to you six months into a project and say, hey, I hear, I hear you have something going on that's cool. Yeah. What yeah, does that look like? Very interesting, very interesting question. Uh, I would like, the way I would like to describe it is we have a symbiotic relationship between our internal COE and our client-facing teams that are out in the market selling automation um, uh, along with UiPath. Uh, and the way that symbiotic relationship work for us is when we are doing anything interesting in terms of an automation use case, and we have many that I can talk about, uh, we do have this constant connect with our client-facing folks where we tell them about the use case, we tell them about the problem that we are sol solving and the way in which we are solving that problem. And in in many cases, it, it generates interest and then we get into conversations where we see, okay, is it an asset that we could we can build out of it or is it simply a, a client use case that we could go in and implement and apply somewhere? So that's one side of the symbiotic relationship. The other side is what our client service folks are seeing in the market. So when, when they see it, they come to us and they tell us, look, we see such and such client doing this and we did it for them. We should think about doing this in Deloitte and for ourselves. Okay. And then we say, fantastic, let's do it. So it's. So Going it goes both, both ways. ways. Goes both and ways. the fact that it is both ways, uh, there is not that sense of pressure or you know that I'm under a microscope. It's all one big family. Yeah. How, how do you measure success? It's a pretty interesting question again. Uh, success is sub subjective, right? Uh, when it comes to automation, the typical matrix that people use to define and describe success is how many hours you have saved or how many hours at least the way we use it, how many hours you have reinvested, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we started with that as our measure and for some time that was really our measure of success. But lately we are seeing a change in that. We are now shifting more over to other metrics like cost avoidance. So for instance, your firm is growing at a certain pace. Do all your enabling areas need to grow at that pace? Uh, maybe not. Maybe we can avoid that cost and maybe we bring in more automation to support that. So cost avoidance is kind of emerging as a bigger matrix for us now, especially given that all low-hanging automation fruits have been plugged, that's a, a big one we are looking at. I think the other matrix which is a bit difficult to measure directly is, uh, is the employee satisfaction. Um, there's somewhere I read that if you want happy clients, you need to have happy employees first, right? And, and one way of making your employees happy is to is to give them the tasks that they really value, that they really like to do. Now again, being a professional services firm, our, our hours, our people's hours is our currency, right? So we want, to, uh, we want to give them as much of their valuable time back so they can invest it in their client-facing activities as opposed to you know, uh, doing mundane and repetitive work. So those are some of the, the metrics and measures we are looking at. So, so I'd like to dig into that a little bit if, uh, sure. if I could, Samir. So aren't hours saved sort of related to cost avoidance? Is that an input to the cost avoidance calculation, if you will? So, or? yeah, so, yes and no. And the reason I say that is because, yes, if you if you do the math, yes, it makes sense no, that- Not that it's direct. I understand yeah. it's not a direct relationship, yeah. but it's somewhere yeah. related, is it not? It, it is related in the sense that uh, our saved is uh, is an immediate measure of, uh, of automation, right? So, if me as a practitioner, if I, if I can hand over a task to the bot, which can take off you know, five hours out of my week, that's an hour saved right away. But cost avoidance is more like, hey, I have these 10 engagements that are coming up. Do I need to amp up to meet those 10 engagements or I simply amp up my automation, right? So that's more around the cost avoidance piece. Okay, so there's an algorithm there, yeah. which makes sense. Do you find, so in other words, when you save hours, you, it, it's you're gonna, at some point it's going to translate into to, you know, headcount avoidance. Okay, are you finding that 
when you run a project, if you can automate that project, that the, that the, the proportion of savings is greater on that automation of the project than it is for those sort of hours saved? I'm just sort of curious as to what the balance looks like. Is it like overwhelmingly speeding up the project? Uh, is the real benefit there? I'm just kind of there is there's absolutely yeah. a benefit there. Uh, the, with automation, you can obviously speed up your projects. You can you can do more with the with the staff with and the got, team yeah. that you have. So that's definitely uh, something that helps us a lot, mm -hmm. both internally and I believe on the client facing side as well. Okay, and just put my CFO hat on. Let's, <laughs> so are you are those um, internal resources or are this sort of out of pocket? Expenses. In other words, it's a hard dollars that I don't spend, or is it resources that I can deploy on another project, or both? It's, it's both. It, for the most part, it's the resources, right? It's like so you, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's the resources that you can now have them do more, more value work with more clients, uh, as opposed to you know uh, have them do many repetitive tasks at one place. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna just keep going. So that's a productivity measure yeah, in absolutely. my mind, anyway. Yeah. So that so I just like to keep peeling the onion yeah. on the metrics. So. I would at some point, so the two things, the cost avoidance and the employee satisfaction, I would ultimately as a CFO want to see that show up in terms of productivity increases and, and decreases in turnover. Yeah. And, and you probably don't have enough experience yet yeah. to measure that, but yeah. ultimately, isn't that where you want to go? I think I think that's essentially where it, it, it's going, and I think that's the way it will probably go for pretty much everyone who is in this journey of automation. Mm -hmm. at, uh, your CFO will eventually want to look at, okay, what, after this investment, where is it leading us, right? So that's definitely the direction we are also heading. Yeah, and so productivity, revenue per employee, is that a good starting point? Maybe you get more sophisticated than that, but yeah, that, okay. that's probably a good starting point. UiPass yeah. revenue per employee is about two hundred fifty thousand, which is pretty average for software companies. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe it's because they're investing more, but right. at some point, I'd like to see that tick into three hundred fifty thousand. Anyway, yeah, I and, and we are and we are on that journey where we are essentially looking to arm everyone with a bot, right? There's a yeah. philosophy in UiPath around a bot for everyone. We are pretty close to getting to that stage where. Uh, where you know you, everybody should be able to leverage the technology, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be limited to a certain uh, a certain business unit or certain pockets within a business. I unit. want a bot. I do. I <laughs> want a bot. I'm getting a bot. I you should have a bot. I would. Yeah. I, I want a bot, and I want to give that bot a very clever name. <laughs> That's. I keep thinking of naming bots. So, so, are your activities? Evaluated in completely independently as a, as sort of your own P and L, or do you get credit for some of that symbiotic relationship that's developed? Because I can imagine a situation where you deploy something, intelligent automation, and you get a yield that translates into a practice for your firm that brings in a bunch of revenue and a bunch of satisfied customers. Do you get credit for that, or is it like no, 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 no? I, I would love, know. <laughs> I would love to get credit for that, but again, it's it's all in the family. It's all one big family. At this time, we are we are simply focused on bringing the right use cases forward for our client-facing folks, and the other way around. Uh, so we haven't gotten to that stage as yet. Okay. But uh, but you need you need to deliver yes. standalone value. You're of evaluated course. that way. Of it's course, not... as a, as a COE, that's what we are evaluated upon. Uh, the matrix that I talked about earlier around cost avoidance, number of hours saved, employee satisfaction, those are some of the, the areas that we are, uh, we are being rated upon. So that's, and that's across all our COEs. Well, Sherlyn, congratulations on, on get, landing Deloitte as a customer and of course a partner, and I'm sure there's big things in the future. We'll give you the last word. Um, bring it home. You know, the takeaway here is we're leveraging partners like this who are going way beyond just automating processes for the sake of process mm -hmm. and hours saved. They're using this to build their business, make their consultants more um, productive, and really driving profitability for the business. So really the automation flywheel going beyond that's really trying to fuel digital transformation. By taking this, they make it go faster, more profitable, more agile, and they become an amazing customer and an amazing gold market partner. Yeah, you guys take this pretty seriously. Behind us, there's this, I don't know what you call it, but there's clouds floating above it. <laughs> if you walk through there, there's some really inspiring commentary. Yeah. And so, um, I encourage you to do that yes. if you're here at the show. All right, thanks right. guys, Thank appreciate you. it. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, keep it right there. Dave Vellante and Dave Nicholson will be back at Forward 5 UiPath customer event from Las Vegas. We're live, right back. <laughs> <laughs>